Hey Steph, we're, we're live. How are you doing? I'm good. Oh, hi. <laughs> we are live already. <laughs> uh, we're just on the two minute countdown. So I'll just turn the music down a little bit. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm exhausted. You're very busy. But, uh, yeah. You'll be staying up late. Burning the uh, midnight oil rating. Yeah, I stayed up late. Was it last night or the night before? Got some nice. Stuff in it. Oh, you've yeah. done. It's looking pretty cool, I have to say. Looking forward to going through it with you. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to finishing I'm... this game now. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. It's sounding really good so far. Well, you know what? Let's just get straight into it, shall we? Um, so I'll just fade this out. Screw that countdown. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here we go. I need like some button work and Q fade out. Q, switch scene, and so on. Without <laughs> having a faff around, I'm, I'm not good at this stuff yet. There we go. Can you see the screen okay? I can see I can see the screen that you're sharing, and I can see the, uh, yeah, see everything. Cool. Super duper. Um, right. Well, so today we're going to look at uh, a few things. We're going to look at what you've done so far. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to talk a little bit about auditions and uh, what our plans are there. And um, I'm going to show you the dialogue designer and how to use it. But before we start, do you want to have a quick peek? Yeah. I don't know if you, have you seen it yet? No, no, you're not sure. All right, okay. Well, I'll show you this first. So, so this is dialogue designer mm -hmm. by Matt. I've given that Matt lots of feedback. I hope he doesn't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so. Well, I'll just give you a really basic example. Can you see the screen okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay, so um, so you have a starting point to your dialogue. This is when you initiate your dialogue. Yeah. Um, in our case, we've got a character called Jove. Mm -hmm. And maybe we've got another character called AI, which we do at the moment. Yeah. And we want these two characters to interact in the dialogue. Um, <clears throat> we've also got a static character called Player. You always have player, and then you've got your external characters, right? Okay. So we can start this dialogue with Jove. So we drag this little bit, bit in, right? And then we can create our dialogue here. So we could say, um, bold uh, AI, hello, and uh, close the bold. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you can do use BB text. Right, okay. Um, are you there? Okay, so now um, there's a couple of things, right? So this thing here uh, decides whether it's going to be a bubble text over the character mm -hmm. or a block text. That now, would like to the base of the screen. Yeah, so I'm only yeah. supporting... So basically what this does is it exports a JSON file, right, with oh. all the choices we make here. So I'm only mm -hmm. going to support certain things from this tool. Cool. So the, the beauty of this tool is it, it it exports a load of stuff and we can decide whether we want to support it or not. So um, we're only going to use this, which is our blocks. We're not having like people walking around and bubbles popping up over yeah, there. Yeah, no, that, I think that looks very really crap as well. Yeah. Slide no, camera. No offense to anyone else who's done that. Yeah, I don't know about it. Totally. Well, that was, that's like a, it's, I mean, this, I think this is designed really for 2D adventures. It's It's yeah. got a sliding camera. So the camera points at the character, but we don't have cameras. So we don't need that on. But now we can have choices. So we can say, we can say if, so we can have a conditional here. Mm -hmm. If something equals something, then this choice is, appears. Um, and we can really get into that in more detail, but we'll just say uh, add choice. So hello, are you there? AI, question mark, and uh, answer me. And so there's two options, okay? Mm -hmm. So now we can create another dialogue and we can have the AI reply. Hello, Jove. Right? Uh, and regardless of which which one he picks, we'll have the both go there. Yeah? Right. So now we can have another choice, or we could just go on to the next bit. Mm -hmm. or And so on, and so on. Or we can have a random possibility. So we can have it so that uh, sometimes this happens, and sometimes this one happens. Right? Or more, we could have, like, loads of different possibilities. Think different things that might happen. Mm. Yeah? That's cool. That's uh, really cool. It really is. We can have uh, conditional branches. So we can have uh, 
so we can have this. So if we say answer me, then if uh, if AI it. loves it's Jove yeah. is true, then it'll say this. But if AI hates fucking Joe, Jove, <laughs> then it says this and so on. So you can really build up all sorts of in-depth that is uh, so cool. dialogue into it. Yeah, it is pretty cool. You can do a lot. And so what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to, you'll be able to set this up. Now, imagine you've got one character in the game. Mm -hmm. You could essentially set up uh, an entire act through this. So okay. you could say, oh, we can have variables as well. So we can say, if uh, has talked to Myra... Right, mm -hmm. it's true. We know at what point they have to talk to Myra. If that yeah. conversation's had, then we'll allow them to continue. Otherwise, we'll we'll stop and just keep yeah. saying, you know what, you need to go talk to Myra. Um, so we can actually create one dialogue that handles almost the entire game if you wanted. Uh, wow. But either way, what mm -hmm. you then do is you just give it a file name, whatever your dialogue is, export yeah. it. So here's one I created earlier. <laughs> Blue style. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a pretty <laughs> complex one I did earlier. Here's good morning. Okay, so start. Good morning, Jove. Yeah. How did you sleep? Uh, option one, like a baby. Option two, terrible. Good to hear it. And so sorry to hear that. Okay. Cool. So it's just the AI kept talking here. You can see it. we're using these. It doesn't matter whether the slide camera's on or not. We export mm -hmm. it. And now if we go into uh, our game, we've now got this box here. Uh, this is who's talking, and this is the text that appears. So let's hit okay. play. So now we've got a character. So if we go into the lift, there's no one here. And the character only exists in the living area, the AI. And if we look at the character, our characters now have the ability to move around. They have a, a current location. Um, our characters can be visible or not. So they can mm -hmm. talk to us, but there's actually nothing to interact with. Uh, okay. They can have a face gonna have a color of text uh, a voice pitch but we're gonna change that um, a current location and the location they've come from mm -hmm. and a script that we use to talk to them with so generally a character should have one script for the whole game generally but okay. we can change it we can change it so yeah, I'm thinking is that is that one script that it just constantly references which section it's gonna to jump to or is exactly that one Yep. Yeah, cool. yep, you can just build it up. So when we when we add a character here, so I've added a character, we just pick the script that we want. So I've only got this one, Good Morning, that we mm -hmm. just looked at. Right? So I double-click on that. And now we're using it. So if I click on the character to interact with it, mm -hmm. Good Morning, Jove. I trust you slept well. And you can see we've got our options at the top here. Terrible. So sorry to hear that. Right? Oh. Click, and off we go. Yeah, so... We're all ready to start building in dialogues. Um, yeah. Obviously, it doesn't look great. I've got to make it. I, 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 li I kind of like the fact that this is this comes over. What I'm probably thinking we will we'll do is um, we'll we'll darken the area so that yeah. this pops up and. More prominent. Yeah, I think we need. So I was just talking to the designer Callum earlier, and he's like, "I don't know what to do." He wants to. He wants to have like people moving around. He mm -hmm. wants to have like, uh, like, like he wants to be able to click on the family photo in the in the picture. He wants a magazine on the coffee table. I can flip through on the, with my clicking. And I was like, yeah. the whole point of this is is that we're not actually having that. Um, we're we're introducing a constraint in that all you're allowed to do is draw a picture. So you can't have it. And he was like, ah, what are we going to do? He's an artist, so he's got to start. Why can't we have it, though? Could we uh, not have it? We could. No, we absolutely could. But then the whole way we've developed this game is wrong because in that case, we're making a 2D adventure game. Uh, we're not making an audio adventure game. Mm. Yeah? Now we need a budget like Mass Effects so we can have things exploding and, you know, maybe not Mass Effects, but, you know, it, it massively, massively increases the uh, requirements to develop the game. Mm. Um, so it's it, it's kind of like, you know, when you, you... Have you heard of the Pico 8? No. Check this out. Here's a Pico 8. Da, 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 da. It's a fantasy console. It doesn't exist. Right, okay. but it is a real 
online console that you can download and play. So mm -hmm. here's a game on it. Loading up. Pico 8, booting cartridge. There we go. We've got the game, right? Mm -hmm. So well, why didn't they use 60 million colors? Why don't they use a resolution of 4K? Why did they just have it 300 by whatever it is? Yeah. Uh, and a resolution, uh, I mean, and uh, uh, only eight, I think it's eight or 16 colors for every single game. That's because actually by introducing constraints, um, we can we can make, we can actually increase the productivity and, and of developing the game. So actually the, the fact that we're here now and we've got this far is because we haven't gone down that road. Okay. So we, more and bigger and better isn't always the best route. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, right. Where do you want to start? I have no idea. With your um, stuff, what do you want to? What do you want to look at first? Um, well, I guess if you go through, you know, roughly what we've designed for the tutorial. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So this is good cool. actually because um, I've got lots of thoughts about this. Excellent. So first of um, all, mm -hmm. first thought, fade in, chapter one, a goodbye. So now I'm imagining that's like full screen, mm -hmm. and the text is appearing on the screen, yeah, white on black sort of thing. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, imagine. stylish. So okay, so straight away we need some kind of cutscene system. Yeah. Um, and then we need to decide just how graphical it's going to be. What? Um, so I was wondering maybe we should have something really simple for our cutscenes. Um, maybe like two colors. They're only allowed black and white or something. So we could have, I don't know, whatever the artist wants. But again, introducing some sort of constraint that makes it... Um, I need to talk this through with Cal. But... Uh, yeah. Obviously, it's very different. We're not. We don't just need a little picture on the side. We don't need to have um, all the the buttons. We can go for something really separate. But we're going to have to create a whole new system yeah. for doing this sort of thing. So I'm going to put that on my list. So we need a. Uh, it's a brand new system thing. So system for full screen cutscenes. I love it. I can't wait to do that. Uh, it should be really easy with the stuff we've developed so far. Um, okay. But to make it look really cool. Might not be as easy, but anyway. Okay, so now you've got the VFX. Yep, so that's just basically what I imagine that you'd be seeing in that cutscene. So you'd be looking out over the sort of vista of Europa. You've got Jupiter, you know, towards one half of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got, you know, the stars and it's just sort of this blackness of the kind of aura of the atmosphere of Europa as well. Cool. Nice. Okay. Um, and then shortly after a few, you know, a few seconds, you hear the footsteps coming in mm -hmm. and then enter Myra. Nice. Um, so this scene is introducing the player to the ability to choose what you want to save. Right. And the repercussions of what that might be, and so I've done a kind of a very, very basic branching dialogue. Mm -hmm. And this is essentially so to put into context, this tutorial will be set um 16 years before the rest of the game. And uh, okay. it is conveying the idea that your father is leaving the base mm -hmm. and you have had some sort of falling out and you don't want to you don't want to say goodbye to him, you don't want to see him again. Right. Can we can we turn this into a dialogue now? Um, I wasn't even turn it into. Yes, yes, yeah. turn it into. I think Let's it might even. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Do you want me to give you control so you can do it? No. Because <laughs> I'm going to give. I'm going to give you survive. this software as well, so you can do this yourself, right? Yeah. Because it'll, it, as a creative tool, this will allow you to do all sorts of cool stuff. And um, anyway, okay, right. So I'll I'll do this first one then. So we've got yeah, Myra think, and Jove. So we're not going to put surnames in in this case. Um, we could, but I think no, uh, but, yeah. that whatever our characters are, we probably need to sort of line up with whatever the characters we have in the game are. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got our two characters. Uh, okay. So then our first dialogue is from Myra. Mm -hmm. And she says, 
as near the time of he's waiting. Boom. Connect that up. And we're off. Um, that needs to be that. And camera off. Next one. So, oops. I don't want to see him. Says Jove. It's like camera. Next one. Now, um, is this coming to an option here, yeah? Uh, I think so, yeah. So, Jove number one. Explain to me what, so. Oh, so that's just choice number one, and then that's the rest of the dialogue underneath that is under, you know, that condition. So, okay, gotcha. Right, so this is Jove's response. That's his choice, but the other response is, can't you ask him to stay? Yeah? Yep. Sweet, okay. All right, connect that up. So now we can create two here. Mm -hmm. So that's his choice is, uh, you know he's doing it. Uh, so you know that's not true, he's doing it for us, all yeah. of us. Okay, so that's my way of responding. And you know he won't listen. This is our oh, can't wait. So cool. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so these both continue on to the next bit with Myra yeah. talking. So they'll both both connect here. Play as Myra. Anyway, there's not much time. Your dad wants to see you. Should have a <laughs> <laughs> so unfair. Right. Uh, there we go. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we've just created that dialogue. dialogue. Yeah. Easy peasy, right? So, um, because it's saved, you can load it up again and edit it, and then export mm -hmm. it again if you want. Cool. So, what if you call that one then? Uh, tutorial intro. Uh, yeah. Chapter yeah. one intro. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I might say Myra Jove in it, just to say that those mm -hmm. are the two characters interacting. And we're going to export that. It gets saved into this path here. So we just open that folder up. There it is. And then I'm just going to move it into the game. Uh, I really need to set up like a shortcut to it so I can find it when I need it. Without going through all my stuff. Uh, dev. So, there we go. Projects and Sfordio. So I've got a folder called Dialogues, and we just paste it in there, and it's ready to rock and roll. So cool. cool. Nice. All right. I just thought I would do that just to familiarize you once again with it. Are you feeling confident with that? Yeah, it looks really incredibly easy to use. It's super easy. And uh, oops, once you've loaded one up like that, you can just re-import and go. Oh, you know what? I want to tweak this. So, yeah, super mm -hmm. good. Right, okay, back to the tutorial. So, Myra exits. Player assumes control. Location, observatory. What? Sorry, what are we doing on the observatory? I thought it'd be nice. You could just go up there and watch this guy or something. Nice, like all right, cool. Yeah, so the okay. observatory. And the objects are, so the objects in this instance are going to be two things that are a point of interest um, on the sky and then you can use the telescope to look around. Right, okay. Yeah. Cool. So maybe we shouldn't call them objects then. Well, maybe it's an object to interact with it. Right. I think you've just you just come up with something there. So um we, I think we need to change the scene here. Mm hmm Uh the user interface. And we're gonna change oh, interact. That's fine. We don't call them objects. Yeah. So interact with Jupiter, stars, telescope. But we're going to look yeah. and so on. So yeah, that works. Cool. Um, right. Yeah, and then you've got a number of dialogue options you can just look at and just mm -hmm. admire. And um, do you remember that a YouTube video I shared with you from NASA with mm -hmm. the Jupiter landscape? I thought you could play that and have like mm -hmm. star signs or something like that. Um, so you could, I don't know if it's possible to have a close up of Jupiter, like an actual photo of it as well. Yeah, we could do. Um, and then if you comment on it, 
uh, then he'll make, he'll make a comment on, on uh, how his life is shit in the middle of this planet. Cool. Okay. Nice. I think um, I, I like that. Yeah. Um, in terms of the sound effects, mm-hmm. um, to imagine we 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 hit look at. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you how do you imagine it? Like, what happens there if I just hit play again? So we we click it. Does this screen here change? Yeah, in my we, mind it did. Yeah. Or do we go for like a full screen thing? Um, I mean, it depends. Maybe maybe for like vistas, you could do full screen thing, or or maybe certain objects. So yeah. realistically, when you when you do this 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 um, view and full screen, mm-hmm. this is like full resolution. Mm-hmm. Is a huge proportion of the screen not going to be taken up by this user interface? That's the thing. I mean, I mean, I much prefer the sort of uh, I haven't got it here, but the sort of. Uh, um, I, I, don't, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to look. Um, I kind of, I kind of imagined. I've been thinking more about having like a the whole a whole screen being mm-hmm. used, and the interactions appear down the here. Objects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then that would look a bit and they appear they appear over the screen. Yeah. And that we have some kind of like fuzzy. I don't know something going on in the background um, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the living area would take up the full screen right now. All these buttons would be like a little interface down here with the interaction, the characters, a little cog for our options or something. Um, and then when we look at something, maybe because we're using this full screen behind it, mm-hmm. we can just kind of f- yeah, fade into so. like show something, even if it's... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't want to make mm-hmm. it too arty. Because if we if we set the, you know, let's say you, you you create a place with like hundreds of objects, and now we set this sort of precedent that we need to create, um, you yeah, know, all that artwork. It could be a lot, and unless we build an art, a big art team, which you know is a lot easier, I think, than building a, a big sound team. So um, we yeah. could go down that road. I've done it before. And with the art as well, I think it. I think people are, are because obviously the audio is going to be an attraction as well, but people really, really link to the artwork. And, and going back to what you said about, you know, the retro games that was on the um, the fantasy console, mm-hmm. you know, the reason why it's like that is it's probably not, not necessarily just because of the constraints, but because it's really quite aesthetically pleasing. Like that's a draw oh, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, retro is think, all very in. I think having like pictures of like you know, for instance, if there was like a coffee cup on the, on the table, and you tap on the if it's on mobile, you or you click it on desktop, and that coffee, I don't know if it's possible, that coffee cup just moves, just like you know, in, like basically enlarged by like one point one percent or something. Or like one, you zoom in on areas point. of the screen. Yeah, so you can you can click on something, and if something doesn't move, then you know you can't interact with it. But if you do click on something. Then the options for that object come up at the bottom. Yeah, so now it becomes a point and click. So yeah. you're hunting around for things. Yeah, I, I deliberately staying away from that. It's it's the tr- it's a, it's done been done before. I don't want to go down that road. That's again, that's what Callum wanted to do as well. Um, I just mm. think that's um, although it's very popular, or at least it was. Um, I, I don't know, but I like, but I like the idea of like. And you know what objects you can interact with, and when you click on it, it just zooms in on the, that piece of artwork on the screen. Yeah, uh, I, we can certainly do that. Easy peasy. What's the What's the difference between the point and click and what we've got at the moment? Where you know, point and click, you you, t- you know you locate the objects on the screen, you you put your mouse onto it, whatever, mm-hmm. and just having the characters the, and everything listed. Mm-hmm. Uh, point and click, you, you don't know the objects there until yeah, you find exactly. it. But is that maybe part of the? I don't know if maybe just having all of these items on the screen mm-hmm. revealed. Um, I don't know. The di- the difference is that um, I mean, if we so, I went through this in one of the first um, streams. So, you've got the Monkey Island approach, 
mm-hmm. or the Thimbleweed or whatever, all these yeah. different LucasArts games. Um, you've got a limited, a finite set of verbs, and then it becomes uh, a guess. The, the The puzzles you're solving are: where do I click on the screen? What verbs yeah. do I use to interact with them? Mm-hmm. And so on. What we're trying to do is create something much more in depth, in that we're not limited in the number of verbs we use. We can make no, much no, more yeah, yeah. Com- we can make much more complex interactions because we don't have to draw those interactions. We only mm-hmm. need a sound. So we could have, um, you know, we could create really crazy shit going on that plays off in- plays on your imagination purely mm-hmm. with sound without having to create a ton of art assets to go with it. Um, so oh, it, it's a bit of an experiment, but I suppose what we're trying to do is create some sort of new genre here. Yeah. That's not point and click. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Um, my, I don't know. My, my worry is that people might be looking at a blank screen that doesn't move, doesn't interact, and might be a bit off by that. Yeah, I, I think, um, you, I think. I think you already get a good idea of what it's going to be like just by playing it at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if we if we go from the living area to the lift, we've got... Yeah, the sound that goes with that and the kind of two steps. And... It's, yeah, the whole point is it's all... It's like listening to a, an audiobook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is the point. It's an, it is essentially a dynamic audio book, rather than an audio book that just has like, now what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. I do this, and then the story continues. Yeah, yeah. So we we might we'll see. But well, yeah. I'm open to it. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'm uh, just I'm I think, a bit wary about the kind of user experience. Yeah, totally. Like, well, that's um, I think. I think I want, I want Callum to. No one's done this before. <laughs> yeah, I want Callum to explore it, um, and, and you know, it's it's a it's a learning process we're going through here. So if we yeah. if we think it's shit, then we we can certainly change and tweak it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Nice. but you know, ultimately, we're not creating a two D adventure game here. Um, yeah. It's just a totally different kettle of fish, <laughs> and we'll be here all year. If not another two. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I don't know whether we'll we should have close-ups of Jupiter. I don't know whether we should um, dictate what you see um, until. Well, I think, but I think it's fair enough to put it in the script. I think yeah. it's great to think about it at this point, and if we mm-hmm. use it, then we use it. Yeah. Um, if we're going to create this sort of scene system, cutscene system, mm-hmm. then maybe when someone says something, like look at Jupiter, mm-hmm. um, maybe we should just cut to the cutscene. And we yeah. we use that to show things. I don't know. There's so many different ways we could do this. So, mm-hmm. um, But I think having a play around and just trying things is the key thing. Um, obviously, it's the last thing I want to do. The first yeah. thing, the first thing I want to do is explore um, having having making all these interactions work, making the dialogues work, uh, allowing the puzzles to work, and making the characters feel like they are alive in this in this area, in this yeah. uh, audio world. So right, okay. So we look at Jupiter. Yep, we look at Jupiter. And it's like, did you say you found some sounds? Yes, I did. I found it. So now to have an actual, like, obviously, um, protest, it's an inter-frequency uh, range that we can actually hear, but, you know, Jupiter is obviously making a sound as it, you know, rotates. Can we, yeah. can we bring it up? You can play that, yeah. Bring it NASA, up. Jupiter it's quite spooky. sounds. One hour of Jupiter NASA Voyager recordings. fucking great honestly I find it hard to believe hey I find it really eerie and um, yeah it was a kind of great soundscape that we can have 
uh, just sort of various points in the game, even if we just put it in as a kind of base, yeah. um, base sound, just to have that sort of place, you know, you, in the first instance, you associate that sound with, with Jupiter for the player, and then if you have it throughout, it's like that constant presence, which essentially it would be. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Can okay, I just uh, I'll stick that in there? There we go. Oh, and this one as well. Yeah? Yep. Cool. There it is. The entire reason for my life. The entire reason my life is shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll have some of the comments later on. They're brilliant. I just, I love this. Right, okay. So, so <laughs> you're looking at the stars. What's the O mean? Oh, just to say what, what object of what's going on. Oh, okay, gotcha. What? Object, yeah. Uh, so look at yeah, comment. So you can look at comment. Galactic feel sounds. Yeah, yes. like that can just be something that kind of is, is similar, but you've got kind of, you know, in some games you have like a kind of like twinkly, you've got like some sort of xylophone thing going on. Maybe, but, you cool. Know, xylophone. Yeah, a lot of games do that. They have a kind of really high, like one of the high notes in the xylophone. Just xylophone. Yeah. Um, Sci-fi? Is that what I'm looking for? I guess, yeah. Kaleidoscope ASMR. <laughs> What's this? Hold on, I gotta see. Wow, she's really taking it to the next level. I can't hear what you're hearing, so... Yeah, well, you can't really hear it, but she's just whispering. Oh, oh see, we haven't got uh, sound sharing. Do you want me to turn it on? Yeah, turn it on, sir. Okay, here we go. Do, do. Uh, share screen. Turn on audio. There we go. But what? That's not the sounds you were looking for, right? No, I mean it sounds like I'm drowning. Yeah, maybe <laughs> it's like YouTube thought that a xylophone might be a little bit like a kaleidoscope, but that's right. not the case. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, well, look, I'll take your word for that. The xylophones. Yeah. <laughs> ping, yeah. pong, ping. Uh, in a few minutes, he'll be out amongst them. Father of the year, out in the coldest space. Seems fitting. See, now, I was like, ooh. Okay. I'm playing somewhere. There we go. So he's about to uh, leave. Yep, daddy's about to leave. Cool. All right, telescope up is up. Point of interest to look at. Uh, oh, I right. Can't so like that that opens, does it? Yes, you can use that, and then the idea is like what, what the screen triggers, will then see. What triggers the telescope it. opening up? You, you use it. Oh, I see. Right. Oh, okay. I'm with you. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you might have like look at um, Earth. Yeah. And then look Point at Mars. To so. Mars. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, have fun with these verbs, because you can write anything you want. Excellent. Um, cool. Earthly uh, sounds. Yeah, I don't know what to write. Earthly sounds. <laughs> <laughs> just, we're just going to see a little spot. How about, yeah. uh, how about crackly radio? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Maybe you can have Western. a nice little... Western music. I mean, uh, country and western. Yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah? that's the classic. Yeah. <laughs> classic. Here's, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. What was I watching the other day when it was? Oh no, I wasn't watching it. it was um, it was a uh, one of these reviews of um, uh, what was the most recent one after that? It was apparently, they had some Don Denver music coming from them. Alien what? space. Oh, I don't know. What is it called? <laughs> the second really, really bad one. <laughs> not really, really good. I'll take your word uh, for it. Yeah, Let Covenant, me know if it comes back. What's it called? Oh, Covenant. Yeah, yeah I don't know if yeah, I've seen that. Alien Covenant. Yeah. Alien Covenant. Yeah. Oh, I've heard of it. <laughs> right. Okay. So, ah, there it is. The little blue dot they call home. That's where he's going. And in four years, he'll be there. And I'll still be here. It takes four years to see. I take it this is another Steph yeah. fact check. Um, it actually takes six right now, but I started to by the time that this happens, they've managed to shave off two years of the um, right. of the journey. 
like cool. the technology, etc. Nice. Okay. Cool. Uh, point to Mars. Martian sounds. Oh, nice. That'll be one of those like yeah. things. What are they called? Yeah. You know the ones that mean um, the board. Yeah. yeah. A closer view, board, but... <laughs> but still a bright, a speck of bright light. Uh, let's say red this time. Yeah. Uh, the next un, uh, the next inhabitable hunk of rock. Why couldn't they have gone there instead of all, instead of all those years ago? I swap endless eyes for a red, dull red desert any time. Nice. This is really good at setting the scene. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> noises. We can have the kind of solar flares. That sound. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Sun noises. Yep. Yeah, so burn. Uh, burning. Yeah. yeah. Deep burning noises or something. <laughs> yeah. Probably shouldn't be looking at this. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, maybe we should say ow or something. Yeah. <laughs> Exit scene stairs, walking across metal, footsteps downward, very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're gonna have to go, we're gonna have to break the lockdown, go out with a little recorder, find all those locations. Yeah. Actually, it's the perfect time to start recording fully. There'll be mm -hmm. no one out Excellent. apart from the police. Stairwell. <laughs> haphazardly put together the signs of repair cool. okay cool. so and that takes you to the labs yes the observatory is immediately the lab is there anything ever any reason why we'd ever want to go back to the observatory um you could you could want to look it up again you could just want to you should have something there that the, I, I think it, i always like to think think there's a purpose for all the locations other than just setting the scene what do you okay. think Maybe not. I don't know. What could be up there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you have to go back and look at something up there. You get a new option. Point at you know some reason to use the the. Yeah. Don't know. Maybe maybe you spot something because uh, wait, are we still having the the comet hitting? Oh no, this is when Dad leaves, no, right? This is, yeah, this is Dad leaves. Oh, okay, okay. This is a flashback, basically, right? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, okay. Location labs, entering from stairs, exits, stairs, corridor, Rick's desk. So I kind of put Rick's desk as a sort of separate entity to itself because there's a number of objects there themselves. Cool. Okay. Good uh, to do the show. We've got like an array of desks and computers, and like it's kind of like it looks a little bit run down. It's, you know, it's, it's high technology in comparison to what we've got, but at the same time, you can see that it's not well maintained. Mm -hmm. It's no longer state of the art um, technology from what, the, what they're, they're wanting. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a kind of hint that maybe there's, you know, money's not coming in as, as much as it was before, mm -hmm. and Europa in general is less of a priority than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I want you to do, so immediately as you go into this room, I want you to hear like a door slam. I want you to hear pretty shit storming across the floor. And I want you to see concrete to indicate that this is a kind of surface. Um, like a more, like the observatory is more of a kind of deck mm -hmm. um, that we've built up into it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you hear these two people, Melanie and Sam, they're engaging in, in the kind of whispered conversation that we, you're able to hear. Um, and it kind of carries on until either until we finish talking or mm -hmm. until the player engages with them. Sweet, okay, nice. I like it. So I could record that for hours. Yeah. Just like the player can sit back and just listen to them moan and argue each other for ages. Exactly. We can have a nice ad lib. Uh, do we know what their relationship is? Uh, they're just friends. Right, okay. Yeah, so and what are they awful. arguing about? Um, so. They're not not um, arguing, but they're they're having a wee gossip about a so the person who has just uh -huh. um, I don't know why she's storming out, and they're kind of having this brief conversation about how um, you all gone gone a bit run down, and uh, are they kind of just dissatisfied with what's going on and the way it's been run? Okay, uh, so arguing about uh, the situation is that the best word to use then yeah the situation yeah 
I think you're going to need to like put specifics in for our voice actors, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I'm, I'm, just, totally I'm just plugging. I hope you don't mind. I'm just putting stuff in where I think like, uh, where I'm like, ooh, question, question. Uh, cool. So I'm not surprised she stormed out. I'm tempted too. Wait, who stormed out? Sorry. So you hear the door slamming and footsteps storming out. Oh, so the That's the initial. Oh, you don't, we don't know who stormed out at this point, then. No, no, no. It's not mentioned. We just know. Ah. Yeah. Gotcha. So wait, couldn't. Um, so, okay, but wouldn't wouldn't that be a character in the scene? No, so this person is like basically has fallen. Essentially, what they're trying to do is create the tension. Mm. I don't want to be explicit with what is going on. I don't want it to be like, hey, Helen. Why have you stormed out? I wanted to kind of create an atmosphere where... No, I get that. Is it, is it Helen it, that stormed out? No, no, I just made that name up. Okay. Um, yeah, is no, it, I just put it, is just it anyone we it. care about that stormed out? No, no, not at all. Okay, it's, so it's, just... It's just a that give her a, so what I mean is, like, so if we have, even if it's a non-usable character, we could have someone in the characters list, right? We're not going to let them yeah. interact with them. Uh, but as they as they come into the scene, as soon as the player engages, so you're saying the low level conversation continues for several moments or until the player engages with them. Yeah. So, are we going to have like Melanie, Sam, and someone else as the person? I mean, how do you interact with them? What do you mean until the player engages with them? How do they engage? So they can talk to them, or they can. So if you go if you go further down. There's two options. You can you can try and press them. Gotcha. The, the two girls. Um, and oh, I'm with you. Okay. No, oh, I get you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now that makes sense. Right. Okay. So not surprised he stormed out. Attempt to. Hans said he was refusing to submit any day until they know for certain what's going to happen. But we don't have all. But we don't all have the luxury. For the results ready to be published. What do I do? Just sit on them. Yeah. I'm sick of this shit too. Cool. Yeah, and I can expand that using the other, you know, the dialogue creator thing. So, okay. yeah, of course. Keep going on while you're, uh, for instance, like uh, you've got the drinks machine. You could, that, that was just a nice little kind of here's how you interact with, with other objects that aren't people. Yeah. Um, I like the thought of keeping it short and sweet at the beginning. Yeah. I like, I, could, I, I find some games they go too heavy on the dialogue too early. Yeah. Um, so I like this the, the how you've got it very matter of fact. You break it down really quick, and then if mm-hmm. we as we draw the player in, then the especially the the attention deficit uh, youth among us, yeah. we, we draw them in, and then they, they we will make them want to read more. Yeah. So cool, All right? Okay, so drinks machine, use and kick. So this is just to kind of get the player used to the fact that you might need to do you know, a verb to something before you can use it, or you can do something that will solve a puzzle. So yeah. if you try and use it, it'll be it'll be broken, mm-hmm. and you'll be a broken piece of shit, or a broken piece of junk, right? You yeah. give it a kick, and you like, you know, that basically sends the signals and things, it works again, and then because you've done kick before, if you then go to use again, um, you will be able to get your drink. Cool. Okay. Um, um, interesting point. Uh, we haven't got a way of connecting the dialogue from this system, the dialogue thingy, to mm-hmm. audio. So um, it just doesn't have any sort of way of adding like voice files to it. Um, so we probably wouldn't do something like this through the dialogue creator we okay. we do this more like yeah we just code yeah. these up ourselves um yeah, yeah, yeah that's why i figured it anyway because it's not that it's a dialogue it's just it's quite chronological yeah yeah and also yeah. it's it's interactive so it changes and you've got turning on and watch and turning off and stuff yeah okay cool a loop of audio contained dialogue um, and current affairs nice i was looking at that brilliant yeah so i've actually written um a uh, basic uh, well, a sort of test TV program mm-hmm. and I've got some dialogue for that going on um, so I'm getting the voice actors to uh, try their hand at that and see how it sounds 
sweet. Okay, nice. Yeah. My, have you got anyone? Uh, my, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, we've got a few people in mind who, who are going to do it, but my instruction was uh, for the news anchor, think Fox News, and for the, uh, the guest who's on, think Jeremy Corbyn, to have that kind of dynamic. Of... <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know uh, what it's like. <laughs> yeah, and you, I suppose like you want these the voice actors to do it together, right? They can bounce off each other. Yeah, so, you know, what I'll do is, you know, if uh, I might, so whoever's going to be doing it, if there's one, um, if there's one version that's perhaps better, uh, so one character might be better, or sorry, one actor might be better at the news anchor, mm-hmm. and another um, is better at the um, the guest, I'll just take both of those plugs and slam them together and see what comes up with. Sweet. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, cool. So... Cannot watch until turn on is selected. Yeah. yeah. Why don't they ever report anything on us? Who gives a shit about another war? And yeah. if you continue and to watch it. Yeah. I wonder how that works can... then. I mean, you, we're going to have it playing anyway, right? Yeah. So you hit watch. What does that do? Does it turn the volume up? Um. Maybe it does. Yeah, maybe we keep I it quite... It... Maybe it set the volume... And we have something mm-hmm. to set the volume for a particular channel in the audio. Uh, yeah. So we can script the volume to go up when he watches. Yeah, I we'll think have that's it. probably best because you might want to turn it on and then it's just, you might want to move on to the, to the next thing. Whereas watch is it's an active part yeah. of them. Yeah. Something like that. Oh my God, someone's, yeah. got the, someone's got the tea tree oil out here. Oh, jeez, <laughs> strongly. Oh my God, is my door open? It is. Oh, wow. Wow. Can knock me out. Right. <laughs> um. So yeah. So we 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 turn the volume up. We just give it a second, and then we have Jove talk, and then we carry on maybe until they press a button. Yeah, I mean, it could be bored of this already. That that dialogue can move down to turn off, like. Yeah, well, that would be yeah. the second bit, yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's nice to be able to just like sit back and watch. Or he'll just occasionally the... just comment every now and then. Well, I like I like that idea. You were saying that before, right? Just having mm-hmm. randomly comment. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least do a couple or a few for comments. Uh, has it played this comment yet? If not, play this one. Has it played this comment yeah. yet? And so on. Um. Yeah, I'll have a think about yeah. how we could do that. Yeah, I like uh, that idea. Continue to watch until click. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, and then that kind of comes out of that, but it can still play in the background. Yeah. Turn off. Cool. <laughs> have we lost the quarters? Are we still got? We still got the crew quarters, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the crew quarters are just going to come later. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I forgot we were on a flashback. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So Melanie and Sam, impress. <laughs> impress, yeah. <laughs> Tati, right, impress. This is the latest GCon broadcast of the week. I was interviewed that. <laughs> <laughs> what is what sort of laughing is it? Like a kind of just like patronizing, like you're fifteen, please go away. <laughs> nice. Nice. So what patronizing laughter? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, they have to fix me all the time, so maybe we'll catch the next one, Melody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and then you can talk to them kind of more sensibly. Yeah. And see what Wait, how old do you see at this point? His dad or Joe? No, uh, Joe. Uh, 15. 15, right. Can we have it? We should p- pitch his voice up a little bit. So whoever does the voice acting, we'll give them a couple of extra octaves. Yeah. And then when he's like... can do a really convincing teenage accent. <laughs> I'm <extremely> worried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So now it's... Let me see my dad. That's his voice. We're saying goodbye to the rec room. Nice. You've got a couple of dialogue options there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Right. Oh, she did get a tough ass couple of that. You can ask why Yasmin stormed out. 
So these will okay. these will all be uh, dialogue systems. Yeah. Um, remember that it wouldn't be an object; it would be a character. Yeah, yeah, no. And yeah. it would be in this case Melanie or Sam. So we could have it either way. Yeah. So whichever yeah. one you interact with, it'll it, it'll trigger the same dialogue tree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Cool. So, uh, dialogue tree needed. Uh, no, dialogue designer file needed. There we go. Cool. Cool. And That's then, great. so, so you've got a couple of options there. What's interesting, so you, is it, you'll actually need, um, I wonder how that'll work. What? Uh, you know what will happen? Um, well, because, so if we use the dialogue designer, right, we've got, mm -hmm. with objects, we've got verbs. Yep. Um, but with characters, we don't currently have verbs. We've got the dialogue system. Yeah. Mm. So, so we could, um, we could start off with something like, you click on the character and it would say something like, uh, uh, Looks like Melanie and Sam are talking about something, right? And then it gives you the option in the dialogue tree to yeah. impress or talk yeah. to, yeah. yeah? And that will take you down these routes. Yeah. That way, I mean, I, I was thinking, like, because we might want verbs for characters. We might want yeah, to, so. we might yeah. want to attack them, kick them, uh, push them. Uh, who and knows what we want to do with yeah. them? But exactly. We, what we probably don't want to do is mix conversation. You're always going to converse with them in, on some level. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to just have a single dialogue tree for every character. Right. Yeah. So in this case, you could have the same dialogue tree for Melanie and Sam. Yeah. Uh, and whoever you talk to, it just takes you down the same lot because you're, yeah, yeah. you're with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then any other verbs wouldn't be they probably wouldn't be like oh, I don't know I don't know the, the reason I'm saying this is because the way this this system's set up mm -hmm. is you've got an interaction script so that's that's the script for talking to our AI yeah there isn't multiple scripts yeah um so in our um or is it in our game script? What we'd have to do is actually we can do it. So we've got scripts for interacting. Um, so I mean, we, what is the um, what's the harm in just kind of like so as a character, or sorry, as a player is reading the, the dialogue options? To say there's like you know, there. I mean, usually in in games themselves, you know, they don't. I mean, unless unless you're kind of playing a really dumbed down version of the game, but. Um, you know, there's there's always a kind of obvious angry response, obviously intimidating one, obviously friendly. Mm -hmm. um, you can usually tell from what dialogue options you're choosing what that character is doing. Yeah, well, you can do all that. you can do all that with a dialogue designer, right? Exactly. So, like, rather than saying like specifically impress. Yeah. You just can offer that top line up of did you see me in the magazine or whatever it was called? Yeah, and um, in brackets, impress or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely, we could do that. I'm just wondering, like, uh, whether we should have um, verbs for characters. I've I've put it as a as an option. Mm -hmm. Um. And because what I could do is, if we wanted to have multiple scripts and multiple verbs that trigger scripts then mm -hmm. um, we'd make characters like objects. So when we click on it, we get our, well, we should get multiple options for the character, right? At the moment we just click the AI yeah. and it interacts. Um, what do you think? Mm. Converse is the verb or whatever. Yeah. So we could, what we could do is we could pass in, um, 
I just want to, I, I'm also thinking forward as to how complicated it's going to be and how much work is required for us mm-hmm. to set all this up as we go. Um, but yeah. yeah, so what we could do is pass in a new interaction script depending on the verb that's used. Because at the moment, talk always loads the interaction script. But yeah. if we could say talk and then script name, mm-hmm. then we could just, put, you know, we could pick as many scripts as we want. Yeah. But then it's tricky for it to come back to that script, right? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. We can always just test it out, try it out, see how it works. And if it's just going to be well too complicated, don't bother. I think it, well, our solution is derived from our requirements. Yeah. So I'm, I'm tempted to suggest that we just have one script, to be honest. Yeah. But we also have verbs for other things. Yeah, and then yeah. from the dialogue, we decide, yeah, we decide how we're going to interact. Yeah, I, I really don't think we're going to add anything by adding all these. Like, it's not going to add value to the player experience if, you know, if the verb... You select the verb first, and then you've got the tree. I think it's not okay. really adding anything to their experience, is it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look. So we we'll just at the end of the day, they don't care how they, you know, if they're going to try, if they're going to select that dialogue option to impress, they're going to do it regardless. Yeah. Whether they see it, they're just going to be wanting to explore it and get, you know, get to know what the response is going to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I, mean, I think that's all right then. So we can still, so we can still say. Uh, so our options so it looks like Melanie and Sam are talking about something option one is impress and then option two is about that Uh, yeah exactly so it'd just be that right yeah exactly yeah that's better yeah like that okay cool yeah All right. Mm -hmm. that's the way we'll do it then cool sweet Oh, so yeah, you have a really large conversation with Mel and Sam. And you get to know a little bit about the environment as well. You yeah. get a bit of his attitude as well. Like, yeah. You get the impression he is, uh, because because he's the first, you know, the first child of Europa, he, he's uh, a bit of a privileged position because he gets to know what, what's happening and what research projects are kind of the best ones to get on yeah. involved nice. with a lot of higher people etc so there's a bit of um not snobbery but just a little bit of arrogance to his tone at this point yeah oh totally that's awesome okay nice so uh, this is a location you can go to yeah within the within the lab i just thought it was because there's going to be like multiple things that you can play with yeah. at risk there i thought it was just easy to set it as a separate location even though it's within lab and mm-hmm. um, so yeah you've got the photograph um you can look at um and you can play so i quite like the idea that when you play a photograph it's, it's going to have this you know you know sort of a brief dialogue about that memory so that photograph contains mm-hmm. um so if you look at you can you know see the well, you know what joe's comment and you get to know that his mom is dead yeah and then if you play, you get to play the moment just immediately before uh, they do a live stream to Earth and uh, talk about um, what they're going to name their child. Yeah. <laughs> this is, I, I don't know, but it sounds so American, doesn't it? I imagine yeah. this being like American actors. Really? I kind of sound British. Come yeah, on, be sweet. serious. All right. What do we say? I, do, I just imagine like. I, d- I certainly imagine just when you s- I don't know I don't know why it is um, oh, see, what, see what our voice type has come up with no totally no I, I'm just leaving that all to you you just come up with the goods I, I can't <laughs> wait to hear it at, at the end of the day um, that's brilliant I love it yeah so it gives a little bit of context of you know who oh who totally is, yeah is. so yeah. cool we want um, yeah. and we want some sort of uh Audible, uh, let's see, what, what would you call it? High pass filter would be mm-hmm. what we'd have, right? Um, yeah. So it sounds like it's coming out of a device. Yeah. Cool. 
but uh, don't ask these guys to do that sort of thing. We want all the original yeah, content, yeah, we'll, and then yeah, the yeah, audio we'll, guy can do all that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Journal. Yeah, and then you can read Rick's journal. He uh, he's getting a, exactly a little bit why he's reading. Nice setting the so setting the date here. Um, yeah, it mentions Myra, so then you know that this is really close. Um, yeah, and you get a little bit of insight into what Rick's thinking. Who's him? How Joe is behaving. Who, sorry, who's him? It, it'll be Joe. I told him. Oh, um, I see. Yeah, you'll pick that up to the context of what's been said. I hope so. I suppose we'll find that out when it plays. Yeah. As it, I think one of those things is like it. It's obvious to us at this point, but will it be? Yeah, oh, you're the expert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, not me. Right. Okay. Cool. Tonight's my last night. Has it been more than twenty years since when you left? Oh, God, an existence for this long. Baron Ice Cube. Ah. Oh, yeah. Well. Okay. So it becomes bloody clear, obviously, when you read that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, and then it's, I love the, the complete lack of emotion or yeah. comment on any of this. It's just like, yeah, whatever. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I've got a computer terminal, but don't worry. You can't use it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm liking the thought of using computer terminals more. I think that's quite interesting. I'm actually wondering if maybe if we're going to have all these options at the bottom, we mm -hmm. could have like sliders and things you could interact with in a more interesting okay. way i don't know what godot has in terms of like uh godot uh ui elements it has uh types and no, layouts i don't think it's got anything really other than buttons and i don't know okay. we'll see something to look okay. at so biometrics do not match please enter password Left. Why does he want to get in? What's the? Oh, it's just because you've tried it. It's something to do with my fifteen-year-old. Oh, right. Okay. He's cool. Trying. Yeah. <laughs> no reason. It's just to kind of point out you can use computers, and it's also again. So this will actually come back a little bit later. Is actually they've not resigned it. Um, his dad's actually done something to it because it's data on that, and uh... that's the reason why you get the message in the first place. What What does it mean they've reassigned? Does it mean it's not yeah, his like computer it, anymore? Yeah, so so to Joe, if he thinks that they've just reassigned it to so someone else's computer now, uh, they've just taken off a log yeah. on and everything. And just gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Off the deals on it. Oh, so you'd normally have access then? Yeah, you would normally have access, yeah. Right, so Joe would have access to his dad's computer terminal? Yeah, why not? I don't know. <laughs> no, <it's> like, <laughs> my son doesn't have access to my Windows 10 machine, <laughs> so I'm hoping that's not the case in 2089. Well, um, he might he might use his son for a like, DNA, match. DNA match. DNA match might you know. It's, it's, it's pointing mm -hmm. to the fact that Jove might be a clone of his dad. No. A clone of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a thought. I'm not trying to punch holes in this. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the corridor. And yeah, I really hate I'll be looking forward to this. Actually, I like this because you've got like you've got a busy mm -hmm. corridor. Well, kind yeah. of. There's right. stuff going on. Yeah, and exactly. I like that. Where yeah. is he? Um, um, and then I wanted to have the crew caught. This is an area that's locked away. So um, okay, I'm just imagining. So this location is a corridor. So we've got lab, rec room, security, and crew quarters. Uh, so crew quarters is locked purely because I just want to create um, a sense that there is beyond the what is it, four rooms that you can go into that this space is bigger than what you can access. I want to kind of mm -hmm. you know, just create a sense of scale. I think you might need to say something more along the lines of a better say bye to my dad or something. You know, I, I don't yeah, I, but, well, you're not spell it out for the stupid people. But that is the stupid people. I was like, where, is, where, did that, where did dad go or something? Because you do have the option at the very end. Um, yeah. You can not say goodbye to him if you want. All right, cool. Nice. Ooh, brutal. 
<laughs> I think you should force some something there. Yeah. Like if you don't say it, then there's got to be some kind of like emotional um, damage to the player. Oh yeah, definitely. That's definitely happening. That will affect the player. Oh, right, cool. Options, yeah, because it's, it's got to be. Uh, I mean, not, when I say the player, I mean the the the, the you know me in this case. Yeah. I'm playing it, and I say no, I'm not going to do it. That I've got to feel that impact there. It's got to be something that makes me like fucking go shit. Yeah. Uh, in uh, reflect the inner torment. I don't know how you do that. Either with dialogue um, or something else that happens. I don't know. Oh, we can figure it out. It could be, yeah, it could be use of good audio that like, might make um, a reaction out of the uh, player. Um, so you've got the rec room, uh -huh. and this is just a kind of area where everyone hangs out. You've got chattering TV screens <laughs> already. An alcoholic yeah. drink, yep. Yeah, I can make up an actual name for that, like rum or something like that. Um, is it it's just a random alcoholic drink that's sitting there? It, yeah, it's like so. It's like a, I imagine it is like a kind of like. A, why don't you Why don't you vend it? Why don't we vend yeah. it and have it have Absolutely. the object, uh, an object that you can pick up? Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, cool. Because we haven't done that yet. We haven't created an object. Yeah. Uh, in a location, um, yeah. and we ha we haven't got an inventory yet. So there there'll be our two inv two steps for taking that next step. Yeah. Cool. Okay, that well, sounds good. Um, so you've got the initial dialogue, and again, this is the setting and scene of the game. Um, so you've got Harry and Peter, who are having a little bit of a gossip about the uh, situation in Europa, and they see the player, i.e. Joe, Joe's coming in, mm -hmm. um, and they know what position he has, due to his father, due to you know, his contact. I, you know, I love this, I love this this whole awareness of the player. Yeah. I mean, when, when it comes to like, you know, it being an audio adventure game, the, uh, this creating presence for the player is mm -hmm. what like makes this, separates us from uh, a point and click adventure game. Yeah. Like, they really, because it, it, you, you I, I actually, I think this is bringing clarity to it, is that you're experiencing this. You're not looking at something and clicking on it and so on. You're, you're it's, it's all about triggering your imagination and making it feel like you're there and you're making decisions. Yeah. Um, I, I love that. I think that the more we can do things like that, the more awesome it'll be. So, yeah, cool. So simple. Yeah. Oh, so we've got the, uh, we've got a chance to scowl at them. Nice. And um, the reaction <laughs> yeah. um, And they can just be that stuff as a street for the dialogue tree. He doesn't know what a playground is. It's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and you talk to them so we can sort of play around with that dialogue and the dialogue um, in a creator that you showed me so I can make that a little bit more interesting. Yeah, this is great. I love that line. It's really good, I have to say. I can, I'm very excited about this. It's such a good script. Okay. okay so they, oh, so they leave. Thing. Ooh, yeah, great. They leave. Um, basically piss them off. Nice, you know, great. So actually, Again, so now that means that they're back in the lab, right? You can still go back to the lab, correct? Mm, no, we, we we can put them in a the lab if that if you want to do that and you want to try and harass them a bit more, or we can. But the lab's still accessible from the corridor, right? The lab is still accessible. Yeah, still no, accessible. I, I think that's a good test. So you can still go back and then uh, you yeah. could talk to them individually. Yeah. So interesting though, because then. Uh, you'd still need to consider them. If you so, this is the thing about these dialogues. Mm -hmm. If you gave them, if you have um, these guys as a group, like Melanie yeah. and I can't remember what the other guy was called. Uh, Melanie and what's the name? Sam. Sam. Yeah. So is Sam a guy or a girl? Doesn't matter. Right, okay. Um, but anyway, so Peter and Harry. <laughs> if yeah. you consider them both separately, and then they. That was, they would then be just yeah. like you consider them one character. Yeah. So when when we create them in the uh, in the game, then we we'd have instead of just AI, we'd have Peter and Harry as one, and so they'd have one script between them. So when they both go somewhere, <laughs> they both go that way, and you've got one dialogue yeah. that always manages the discussion with them. So I, I like that. I think that's even more mm -hmm. interesting. It's quite intriguing that you always yeah. have to deal with both of them at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, yes, this is good. So, so I, I'll put in notes here. So, character, yeah. char both char uh, characters move to lab. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I can't wait to do stuff like that because <laughs> you will be able to follow them around. So, okay. Cool. And then we've got another TV which can be playing a different news channel or something like that. So you have a different so that it's, uh, different soundscapes there. And then when you try and switch channel. Um, scientists one and we can have we can have a bit of a randomizer so i like that it's just like yeah. no just yeah switch it back you can never you can never change the channel <laughs> yeah totally uh yeah exactly so you could have like choice of six random whatever random places, yeah variations yeah. uh followed by I better not. Back yeah, you better it's just, it's just slightly stops <laughs> at that point. Okay. Clicking programs, which is uh, original. Yeah, and then you just watch it to program in more detail, just as above, but it'll just be a different program. And um, then you've got an alcoholic drink, so we can bring in this idea of a vending machine. Mm -hmm. Um. And then we can we can use it. I like the idea of like you try and tip it, and then this other character who's already there, she just says, "I don't think you're old enough." Yeah. <laughs> so so she's there, right? Okay, gotcha. Did she come in? Did you say? No, she's already there. Oh, she's already there. Okay, right. Yeah, and she's also another character you can talk to. Cool. Um, so you're you're on quite good terms with her. She's a little bit younger, so she's more your age. Have a, a dialogue with her, which you know, I didn't, a little bit back scene and everything. I didn't see her in the character list. Is she there? Yeah, she was there. I put her right at the top. Oh no, this this one here, so you know, because like I haven't. She's not going to be a massive. Um, these are only. Oh, these are your your main roles. Oh, hello, Steph. I've lost you. You've lost audio. Try uh, disconnecting and come back again if you can hear me. No, yeah, oh, there yeah. you are. Back. You are back. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, probably the internet loads. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Sorry. So, um, cool. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, definitely feels yeah. like someone you're you're able to associate more with. Um, yeah, but nice I think advice at the end. A little bit. Um, I don't want, the idea that I don't want her back is because I want to try and create this atmosphere that you know people are coming and going from Europa and sometimes they, they can be there for four or five years and then they go back and you never see them again yeah totally um, and then location security so this is obviously you go from the wreck area back into the corridor and then out into security and your initial view is just sort of this loading base through this observation window and you can you know you can maybe hear this kind of bustling of like things being loaded in and people walking across the loading bay area and just the sounds of like preparing for you know preparing for launch essentially can i just go back to this i just this whole thing yeah. of not of not saying goodbye and the choice he's got yeah because it's such a massive choice yeah because you're inflicting like emotional pain on daddy for the next four years like well well eh? more on yourself because well yeah daddy well that as well daddy, both daddy dies well that's even worse right <laughs> <laughs> so but i mean if so shouldn't we just not allow him to say goodbye at all even if you try so that that way no, his like state of mind is the, si the same regardless so he's all because he's always going to have that emotional pain of not being able to say goodbye, whether he wanted to or not. I mean, yes, but then it kind of feels like your choices don't matter, and you want. I'm just wondering how the choices that choice is so significant that it's going to pay play a huge impact on you as the player, and the choices you. I don't know your your motivation later. I, I I will enjoy the challenge. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. All right. I like this. Yeah. It's really. I mean, I never had to consider this question before. Thank <laughs> God. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so security yeah. is another yeah, place you security. look. Yeah. 
Um, and then, yeah, you got security guard. You have a brief conversation with him. What if you go here st- first of all and you skip all the rest? You can still you can still play through. Oh, cool. So, what, uh, okay, cool. Sorry, I'm going to spoil it You're for myself by asking what yeah, happens yeah. at the end here. <laughs> yeah. So there's no there's no consequence of not going through to the lab, not looking at your at the desk, and not looking in the rec room. But it's just. Um, you know, you're obviously going to miss out on a lot of their... Um, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I, it's nice to have the depth there if you want to explore yeah. it, so... Yeah. yeah. At this stage, like, what we want to... Well, what I was thinking is that we want the player to just be able to feel like they they have the time to explore and not, yeah. like, they've not fucked up the game if they haven't done something. They, you know, yeah. the information will be there just in another format as well at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So he can't hear you. Yep. Mm. And I can't. I don't. This was like a like one in the morning. I was really writing this. As you can tell by the quality of the detail I've gone into. It's definitely a gradient. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, yeah. Oh, this is brutal. So you've got essentially you've got three options. Um, is it three or is it two? Say um, goodbye. Remember. Yeah, Tell them how angry you, you are, or you leave. Can basically fuck himself, or you can just leave. Oh my god! Oh my yeah. god! Which one's worse, do you reckon? I think it's. I think most players will be like. So. Um. Oh, I don't know. Once, I mean, that's nice, but this is transparent. This is yeah. good. It's getting it off your chest. This is probably the best option. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but to leave, f- you, you, you know what you should do yeah. is it should be say nothing and leave. Yeah. Oops, and not in cap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that. So it's like yeah. you know, that's it. You're like screw yeah. you. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah okay. Say goodbye, have this nice little conversation. Well, semi nice little conversation so, with the daddy. So, wait, so if you leave, you, yeah. you leave the room? You leave the room, and that is your only opportunity. You can't go back. Like, that is a. Well, what's the kind of choice? It's a, a definitive choice. You can't go back one time only. Oh, I can't, can't bear it. I, d- I don't want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Down, I, to think about. Oh, I don't think I think I don't think we should cover this right now. I think you should. Yeah. Let's, it's 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 heart rending. So let's just. Okay. Uh, oh my god. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And okay. then either way, what happens is Pan um, <sighs> okay, so, two months later. Oh wait, hang on, hang on. So now the trouble is here, right? Okay. So we say mm-hmm. you're saying you could always go back and explore the other locations. Yeah. But actually, this is like. This is like the thing that triggers the end. Yeah. Right? So why don't we have that um that in the so your dad isn't so your dad's not there yet until you've interacted with a certain number of people and explored a yeah. certain amount. So once you've interacted with like everyone to some degree, once you've yeah. talked to everyone, uh then we allow you to um yeah, that's fair enough. If you if you yeah, say like this. Yeah, so if you interact with everyone, then the first time you walk into the observation window. He, he's there. But if you don't interact with Leanna, yeah. for instance, then he's not. Yeah, yeah. so like actually, that. let's make it that Chris, the security officer, isn't there. Yeah. Yeah, and you go into the observation observation window and you you can just look out at the shuttle. Yeah. But your dad's not there, nor's Chris. Then once you've yeah. interacted with everyone else... If you go back in here, because at that point you're like, "Oh, what do I do?" Uh, and then this this will be a cutscene that kicks in, right? Yeah. And then you get well a dialogue that gets kicked in, yeah. and off you go. It starts, and this triggers all the way to the end. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'll just put some little notes in here. So, observation window uh, is initially empty. With a view you can look out of at 
shuttles, etc. You're going to have to fill that out. Yeah. Because uh, you're going to want to. And then some... maybe you can use the intercom, but like, there's no response or something. Yeah. Intercom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No response. I like it. It's just missing. No one to talk to anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Or in fact, intercom. Uh, why? There's no one out there. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think. Yeah. Um, but after talking with all characters, even. Maybe, yeah, maybe say there's no one out there yet to kind of indicate to the player that this can be used again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, but Dad will be leaving at some point or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's the shuttle he'll be going on or whatever. Yeah. What's this? Okay, right. So, uh, but after talking with all characters, um, so when we say talking with all characters, what we can do is we can have a flag. So you yeah, talk to a character, like, it says you talk to him. And, yeah, yeah, and then it's just a big if statement. If you talk to all these people and you enter this location, then this happens. Yeah. So after talking with all characters... Um, if you enter this location again, yeah, see below, yeah, cool. All right, can we say condition? Yeah, cool. Right, cool. All right, nice. I'm not gonna read it, I just, I just want to hear it. Oh, you're breaking up, you're turning into a Dalek. I'm sure there you go. You're back yeah, again. Yeah, it's German. Oh, German. Yep. And then... Then it's just a little too much. And we can have a little bit more exploring than this. It's purely a question that is dependent on what you what option you take. So if you choose to leave, if you to shout at him or still take by, hmm. a slightly different uh, text will come up. But the same ending is going to happen, um, which if you want me to reveal on here is fine mm -hmm. um, but you know a certain other figure character is no more right and okay yeah of course <laughs> and it oh, means geez. it needed to be two months later because like uh for so yeah i don't want to go into too much detail but um with regards to the timing of the message that is eventually sent um yeah it he would need to be a little bit further away from the author so basically now we've got this big condition Mm -hmm. that affects the entire state of mind through the whole game. Yeah. It's a big one. I, you know what? I, I'd love to um, have that and RPG well, it elements. Might, it, might not, it might not be the whole game, though, because you might yeah. feel a sense of reconnection Yeah. Um, after the first act or something. Perhaps. So you might get to this point where you're like, you know... I forgive myself, or I forgive Dad for leaving. Yeah, I think I, I'm more than ever. I think there's got to be some role playing elements to this. Yeah. To make it so that it becomes super replayable, rather yeah. than just being a story. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe we've got to have a big bad guy at the end, or some sort of like a boss fight or something. Have Have you ever played uh, Faster Than Light? Uh, a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, so you, I mean, you can play it over and over again. It plays differently mm -hmm. every time, and it's like considered a roguelike type of game. But you've got yeah. a big bad guy ship at the end, and then you've got all yeah. sorts of different ways you can build yourself up as you before you get to that fight, yeah. um, and how you <clears throat> the, the yeah. path you take. So, but you still got you know, well, you haven't actually really got much of a storyline in that. You've just got mm -hmm. you're getting chased. Um, mm -hmm. We could do so much more, but anyway, I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. So, okay, it's uh, almost half ten. Um, what's your next step then for your audition? How are you going to, how do you want to do this? Do you want me to um, send anything around? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I have got, um, I do kind of want to expand um, a couple of other minor roles. Um, uh -huh. So with, um, the casting notes at the moment contain important characters. Um, that I've written so far 
Um, I actually want to further develop some more major characters as well, um, as well as like um, background characters. Like if you walk into a room, I want to hear like chattering, you want to hear people gossiping, you want to hear people on TV mm-hmm. and building up and stuff like that, and communications between Earth and stuff like that. I really want to kind of yeah. build up that level. So I might spend this this next couple of days trying to script that um, as well um, as trying to further develop um, chapter one, which is him in his quarters and him getting the message. So I'm going to focus in on that. With regard to the voice actors, though, absolutely mm-hmm. same stuff. Then what we've got right now, because the more people we get, the better idea of what what we want the, the characters to sound like. So you want to what, send the you? tutorial out? Not, no, no, not the tutorial. I've got casting notes. I've got game setting. Casting um, notes? Yeah, I've got game setting, I've got character lists, and I have a Dolby Winters just to set for one. And what else I've got? I've got oh, the. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the, oh, the, wow. Yeah. It's me. Oh, but I my don't goodness. Get so, so, obviously. Brilliant. So I don't send that to the female, but um, we've actually got a lot more female uh, voice actors than men at the moment, which is uh, not expected. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. All right. No, it's, it's just, I mean, honestly, I'm so excited to just bring it to life. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole news, news anchor having a wee harassing chat with his guest. Yeah. Oh, my God. The game setting. Is this the universe stuff? Yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, what did you say you've got a casting? Oh, yeah, casting. Yeah. So, in the in the casting folder, there are... Um, there are people's names, so maybe don't go into that. I've given each. Oh, these are all um, people that are going in? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So should I, uh, if anyone's interested, should I? what should I give them? How can I help get you more auditions? Um, well, what you can do is you can set a folder for them, give them access, um, and then send out PDFs of, of whatever is in there. If I add more to that, Mm-hmm. Um, we can also open this folder out and give them more as well. That you can constantly be referencing as well. I think I so mean, I'm giving everyone a initial deadline of 25th for these characters. But as we create more and we've got a different environments and different people, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd very much like to have you know more um, examples of what people are going to be sounding like. Yeah, I, you know what, I'm really just focused on um, ensuring that we get our uh, proof of concept. Uh, if we get too bogged down with like, right, we've got to get the, these guys first. I think we should just get them all for our tutorial yeah. um, and and then see where we get. And maybe we just have a big get together and do, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. We could do it on live stream. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Is there? Yeah, maybe, what on live stream? Well, like a audition, okay. not an audition, but uh, once once your auditions are completed, we could do like yeah. a, a casting, uh, like a practice script run where we yeah. just try and practice them and, and just see if we get the tones right and so on uh, yeah. and then everyone can go away and record their their bits yeah that sounds good that's a bit like a table read basically yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah um so everyone here everyone here is going to be very major characters if not already in, in tutorial but they're going to be in chapter one where the the aim is to find my own yeah so if we if, if our proof of concept can be tutorial and then chapter one, find Myra, and that is the base of what we can do as a yeah. proof of concept and further it develop. That would well, be great. Yeah, oh, totally. Now, well, now yeah. my base mark is now a tutorial, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I forget yeah. chapter one. I got to get tutorial working now. I've got this. You've just exactly. raised the bar again. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of imagine it being a bit like you know a chapter of uh, Shakespeare. Where you've got all your characters, and you know, um, we just—I don't know how you how you audition for Shakespeare. Any idea? I'm um, not, I've never—I've never done any sort of auditioning or casting stuff know, before. So, I've, I've, yeah. I have done it before. Um, so you, I, what I've been doing is I've just every um, every voice actor I've gone out to, or they've come to me. I have I have always had them read script. Right. And I've invited them to have a different, uh, so, you know, if they have their own style and I want them to give as much information about the character as possible. Mm-hmm. So they know the tone that they can bring and what they can bring to that character. If they know that they're an older woman, if they're, you know, if they're, for instance, uh, highly intelligent, maybe a little bit reserved, maybe remote, that's going to be reflected in their 
in yeah. their voice and they're able to bring that so i'm not telling anyone this guy's american this guy's yeah. british this guy whatever this guy's that like i'm telling them what the character is mm-hmm. and then they will send that that's what they think that they that character will sound like back to me and if, if i want to tweak bits to it or if i feel maybe tone down that accent a bit and maybe be a bit more pedantic with um mm-hmm. you know how, how they're speaking or you know something like that we have a bit of interaction so once i hear it i can have that feedback but yeah it's it's really interesting i, I don't know if you've uh, had a chance to hear i put it up in um, her um her file actually her folder she's uh, a game show what where yeah if you do aaron evans walker oh man what oh my god right okay let's have a listen they're saying the infected have taken over north side this is american it's only five miles from here Peter, oh. we need to go get in the Brilliant. car come on Oh, shit. oh, she's really good. Peter, Peter, get in the car. You. <laughs> Welcome to the spring of Fairy, travelers. I oh, know she's brilliant. From the road. My waters will surely refresh your bodies. I, I don't need hear anymore. She's hired. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how do you know Erin? Um, I got actually a long time ago. I, I have not, I think I have met her once. Um, but she's actually married to someone I used to kind of work with when I was right. really. Wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, so she was recommended, and uh, I was like, "Oh, I know your husband." Um, yeah, nice. yeah, she she is herself American. Um, um, I've yeah. got I've got a little contact as well. Um, my my best pal from school mm-hmm. uh, owns this company here, which is oh nice, massively becoming the biggest voice actor uh, website in the world. Let's get some discount. So, well, I think I think he'd probably be able to pull a few strings, maybe, and we could yeah. just get mobbed with people that want to have a want to feature on this. So, uh, but if we were going to do that, there's no way we could cope with the sheer numbers that would come in. Um, so, what we probably want to do is have like a here's what you do: you record it here, you upload it here. Uh, here are the here are the here are the roles, here are the lines that you have yeah. to say. It has to be really explicit yeah, so yeah, if you yeah. if you want me to do that then set something I'd up say, for me yeah i say we could do it maybe sometime next week um okay. so i want to have um we've obviously got you know some supporting characters some basic dialogue on the tutorial yeah i want to really define who's in this game what you know what their characters are how they relate to the yeah. spot, and then yeah. any peripheral audio like tv Radios and everything that coming in, like, that's what I want to try and build up as well. Yeah, totally. Nah, cool. Okay, all right. Yeah, that sounds great. Sweet. Okay, well, I'll leave that to you. You, 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 you're just going to come to me with a load of audio files, okay. right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you want me to reach out to uh, Vocal, let me know, and yeah, I can, definitely. I'll, I can always have a try. No promises. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, sweet. All right. Well, uh, I will continue. My next goals are going to be, um, let's see, it's my to-do list. I don't know what my most important thing. I think this the cutscene is now taking a big priority. Um, I've got a few things I want to do, um, just in terms of how things are connected within the dialogues. Uh, I want characters to be able to move around. I want characters to be able to make uh, background sounds. Yeah. Uh, background, exit, and arrival sounds. Um, if we've got, let's say we've got a character with um, behavior and they, you know, they do things and they're motivated to do things, then we want to hear them doing their shit. Um, I haven't got anything for triggers yet, but I don't know if I'll even need them anymore. The way we've done it at the moment um, yeah. seems pretty good. Right, cool. All right. Well, look, it's half ten. I think we should call it a day. But uh, amazing! I'm yeah. so excited. Let's yeah, <laughs> let's focus on getting the tutorial done now. Um, yeah. And what I'll do is, I'm not sure how we should do it in the game because I, I'm creating like one big area. Um, will these areas still be accessible um, after the flashback? They will, um, won't they? You just don't have access to them, right? One. So, yeah, so yeah, you're still so here. Yeah, because it's going to be, yeah. 
but you're never going to go in here during the flashback, right? So we could. So what I'm saying is, we could map out the whole you, the whole facility, and all yeah, the exits and that. connections, um, yeah. for both the you know flashback and afterwards, um, yeah. and then we just open up open up these areas. So yeah, I can uh, I can draw that for you. Um, so I've drawn it. I've got it on paper. Um, all yeah. the kind of exits and where things are located. Um, okay. The tutorial will be very much self-contained because, for plot reasons that will come to light further on the game, um, there's a huge investment in Europa after the death of its father, and okay. the entire place is transformed. Cool. All right. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, so what we'll probably have to do then is, um, so you still be able to go back to the lab, right? You still be able to go back to the corridor and so on. It would just at it this would be point. completely just at this point, and then at the end of the tutorial, not, not everything that you have seen is going to be different. It's going to feel like but you're going to take elements but, of the of layout and like hmm. elements of like we've got um you know graphics alongside it. We'll take elements of it, so it won't feel completely new. But we want to be in a position where we, well, as a player, you're thinking, oh, 20 years has passed. 20 years worth of investment. Oh, 20 years. Yes. Yeah. Wow, okay. yeah, like 15, yeah. yeah, so what we want then, we want to keep the structure, we want to change the properties of it. Yeah, quite, so exactly. So rooms will be assigned and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, so we're probably going to need some sort of like load chapter two or load chapter one. And mm -hmm. it's going to go, I'm going to delete these characters from these locations. I'm going to add this character here. I'm going to use this script here. I'm going to, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's tricky. Um, okay. I think, think of it. Think of it less like. Um, so you've got Europa twenty eighty nine. That is. Oh, lost you again, Steph. Seems not playing. For, seems playing bad. No, is a different allocation. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah, <laughs> it's losing yeah, you again, sorry. Steph. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's fine. Um, yeah, what I was trying to say is like think of it. Think of it less like. The Europa 2089 base, right, is a completely different location to Europa 20, whatever it is, 2105, which is the date that the player will be accessing it from. Right, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. Don't worry about if it, I will do the layout for it, so don't worry about what happens. So just don't write things, just pretend that you are in another location entirely. Right, gotcha. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. so then what we probably need is some system of, like, uh, being able to save this entire tree yeah. as tutorial. So we don't, rather than call this game, we'd call it, like, tutorial. tutorial. And then yeah. we'd load up the next one, and we'd call it chapter one and so on. So, exactly, hi, yeah. hi, Real Rain 232 Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I'm not sure what you, you mentioned a round table, but you probably written that so long ago, I have no idea what that's in reference to, so. Anyway, right, okay, cool. All right, so um, in that case, that's another thing on my list and stuff, is uh, ability to switch levels. Right, Think table, tutorial. Uh, right back <laughs> what's that? What's that? The guy came round table with reference to uh, the table reading. Ah, right, of course, yeah. Cool. Uh, Right, cool. All right, I can do that. I think that should be fairly straightforward because we've got all the we've got we're creating all the tools to to do that. So, um, super duper. Right. Well, thank you very much for joining us again, Steph. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Uh, I can't wait till we can just start putting it all together. So I've only got a few more little things to do here, okay. um, and even if it looks crap, um, we can still make something that works and we can play. Yeah. And if we can do that, that's the first step. We've got to we've got to get to that point as quickly as we can, because it's going to give us the motivation to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter that it looks rubbish. If we then decide, you know what, we've got to get graphics in here, we've got to improve the sound effects. No problem. That's just going to make mm -hmm. it even better. But let's get a proof of concept working for our tutorial first. Yeah. Thank Sweet. You. Cool. All right, Steph. Thanks again. Have a lovely cool. evening. Well, the rest of it. <laughs> <Yeah. then. laughs>
And uh, I'll catch you uh, whenever you want to catch up next. Just let me know. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'll All catch right. up with you soon then. Cheers, Steph. Nice one. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining. Talk to you later. Bye. And I'm going to wait a sec because apparently it cuts out early. Three, two.